like so zoo the success of zoo you know so there there was a, there's a lot of things that i know this is a skate show so i could get into it yeah. i usually don't get into this so you know when we went to go do it it was like you know how do you how do we market this and like unlike shut which is doesn't mean anything it means a door shutting or something is closed you know zoo york is perfect because it is the entire idea in one in two words a hundred percent yeah hundred yeah. percent the name is genius yeah well genius i agree i did not come up with that you right. know that is a mark edmonds uh and a futura and a andy kessler creation wow. um and you know but it, and it, as if to, you know, the first thing we made like one of the first things we made was uh, you know, a Zoo York hoodie. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, they just came in and they were cool. And I remember putting it on and going skating with like Mike Hernandez. And I was just like standing there and like some like, you know, uh, like a, a, like, like a professor, a professor at like Columbia university, <laughs> a black guy, remember him walking towards me and I'm like, ah, and it was the nighttime. And he like looks at me and he was like, Zoo York. He was like, that's brilliant. He was like, I love that. I get this immediately. And I was like, thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like. Validation. Yeah, but validation outside. Yeah. 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 Right. If you can get someone to grasp it, there's a great story. You know that stupid, not stupid, uh, super famous video game, Angry Birds? Yeah, yeah. of course. So the guy who invented it, I guess he's like in Sweden or something. The story is like he was trying to make iPhone video games for years and nothing worked. And he came up with Angry Birds right before Christmas, uploaded it to his phone, went to the family Christmas party and was showing people it and then like couldn't find his phone and then found the grandmother Oh, that camped out, couldn't stop playing it, yeah. and he was like, "That's it, that's it." <laughs> you right. get the gra- you get grandma doing this, yeah, shit. yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you want to know about it? Because I got to go into, I could go into like the designy aspect of it, or well, I just like the behind the scenes stuff because even in the documentary, you were, you know, you you wrote Zoo York oh, like yeah. a thousand times to try yeah. to get that one that was at right. Fat Farm, yeah, at Fat Farm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at Fat Farm, it was yeah, brewing up there, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 there's a graffiti writer who who passed away. One of the greats, Dondi, and Dondi White, and he like if ever you know when I was a kid, there's a difference between doing pieces and doing tags, and like mm. Dondi seemed to have like the maximum ability, and I loved his tags. And when he would write stuff, he had this really amazing hand style, and I always like aspired to do that. Mm. So when it came, what I originally thought, what I wanted to originally do is also one and. Uh, who was also a, a show associated with the Zoo York graffiti crew and soul artist is Zephyr. Okay. Who took the graffiti tag Zephyr from the Z Boys because mm-hmm. he was a skateboarder. Mm-hmm. So the Z Boys, Zephyr skates, Z Boys, he is in New York City, is really into Tony Alva and all that, and then decides to steal Zephyr Zephyr. as his tag. And Zephyr had this amazing one line Z E P H Y R. And uh, just always was like in New York was like revered as one having one of the best tags. Uh, he had a tag like a what we would call like a perma spot, which is a public spot that's easy to get to. But uh, I mean, a perma spot could be it's a spot that no one can get okay. to. So that no one can ever erase it or go over you. But this one was a spot people. This could is get to. this is like a, I don't know what you would even call it because it doesn't exist anymore. It's like an it's like a, a a place of honor where you're such a big graffiti writer Nobody. and it's such a big public space that no one would ever go over okay. it. Mm-hmm. And it was on the corner. It was on the southeast corner of of Washington Square Park next to the Dance Skin Ballet shoe company store and there was this huge it was like a four foot tag zephyr right on the eye level on the sidewalk huh. and it was just there forever wow. since I, and I would always be like damn like no one's, no one's going over that. this they really respect this dude crazy so when i went to go do the zoo york tag that was my first thought was like i'm gonna do something like zephyr mm. because it's the lineage of skateboarding and graffiti i just couldn't do it I went through, you know, tried to do that. And then ultimately it was just like, well, who, who's the best? Who was, who has your favorite hand style? And it was Dondi. And from that point, I think he might've even passed away at that oh. point. He might've just died at that point. Mm-hmm. But I was just like on hell bent on trying to duplicate his like mm-hmm. chisel tip way of writing huh. Dondi with Zoo York. 
but that's how come like the O's look weird because I was trying to incorporate his D's and it just evolved paper, just paper, just paper, just, it's like skating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You keep I want to learn yeah. how to kickflip. I right. just keep fucking and doing it. you're your own worst critic, so you need to get it perfect. Yeah, yeah. It, was there any time where you were trying to just do other types of logos and being like, oh, cool. or did you have this vision already? You, one of the funny things about Zoo was, you know, Larry Clark, he goes and does kids. If you see pictures sure. of him, he's wearing like the first hat we made, which is sort of like an early version of the ZY that is an exact ripoff of the Yankees, yep. mm, the uh, NY. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Adam was a little bit worried we were going to get sued yeah, by the yeah. Yankees. And also, I was just like, it's too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. Right. Let's not ever do it again. So we did that one run of hats. Mm. Larry still wears it to this day. He has it. Oh, Later on, when we got bought out by Echo, yeah. they were just like, we started, you know, we left the skateboarding atmosphere and like went out into right. the public persona. Right. And it was like, we need something that so people who don't skateboard are going to relate to. Yep, 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 yep. And I was like, you know what? Like, if we're going to sell out like this, then what about the ZY? Gotcha. You know, and that's when we went back to doing the Yankee style ZY. Huh. Interesting. Another fun fact after I left Zoo, we were one of the, Zoo was one of the advertisers in the Yankee outfield. Wow. For a few years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So, wow. When, like, you know, someone hit a home run, like the <laughs> Chaz Ortiz years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was wow. like the Zoo York huh. out there. Well, I, I want to get into the, the whole buying out by uh, Echo and everything. But, you know, just uh, f like forming the team. And then when did you guys actually realize that this was bigger than skateboarding and you guys had to really, like, it was going, it was transcending. It was mainstream. It was right? going mainstream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a huge, a huge story before that. Like, is everyone, even anyone going to respond to this? Um, you know, and we're like, uh, Rodney had a really great, he was close friends with uh, Fausto. Okay. And Fausto basically was cutting us deals for like super cheap, like banner ads or then, column ads. And like, I would make an ad. They're like, we got an ad for Thrasher. And I would like make an ad. And then they were like, oh no, it's got to go sideways. And you know, and I would stretch it out to, in yeah. Photoshop and always look garbage. And I was like becoming really like mad because I was trying to do elevate skateboarding to like cooler advertising. Mm -hmm. This was also like when uh, everybody jumped ship. It was like when all the skaters took over the skate industry and like girl came out yep. and, you know, and you would look at like Big Brother or any or, or trans world and everyone was ripping off logos. Mm. So you couldn't tell whose ad was whose. As a graphic designer at that point, I would like flip through and be like, all right, I know this is Tide. You've ripped off the fucking Tide soapbox. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> but like, what company is this? And I'd be like, yeah. uh, oh, it's Woodstock skateboards, you know, or sure, sure, no sure. disrespect to you, Woodstock, Simon Woodstock, wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like that. And I was like, there's no cohesive marketing. Mm. There was such a reaction against Oh, that's a Powell ad. That's uh, you know, a Santa Cruz ad because those graphics are like, you know, legendary, iconic. Yeah. yeah. So you wanted your graphics and your ads to stand out, I and it, you wanted people to know that it was a Zoo the, York. The ad. goal was when you're flipping through the magazine, something has to Pop. be like that's a Zoo York ad, right? right. And it had its own evolution. Uh, the first ad that I did, I did a couple like graffiti tags and New York grimy shit, but mm -hmm. it was all, it was all more like ambiguous. Like if you, the, the idea was to be like, what the fuck am I looking at? Where are you coming from? But the first ad that like Robbie Gan Jimmy was like, I want to um, uh, do an ad, you know, I'm coming to New York and I was like, I'm going to go shoot an ad and what, what, should, what trick should I could do? What trick should I could do? <laughs> yeah. What trick could I do? What, sure. what, where, where's the spot? And I remembered there was a weird, anomalous, very low kinked hand railing in the middle of Central Park, not down some stairs, but down like a little dip. Okay. And I was like, hey, you know, you could go try this out, you know, because it's weird. I don't know. And I took him there and he was really like not into it. He, and I, we were with uh, Ivan Perez, who was also skating for Zoo. And it was me, Ivan, and and uh, Robbie Gan Jimmy. And, you know, I showed him the thing and he was like, yeah, where are you going to shoot it? And there was a whole thing about like in skateboarding, everyone always wants to shoot the person, the skater's face. You don't mm. want to see the skater's butt shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot. yeah. yeah. yeah right. um, but I looked up a tree and I was like, oh, I can climb up the tree because you couldn't really see 
because there was no stairs what this was. Gotcha. So I got, I climbed up the fucking tree and I was like, had my little motor drive, which sucked. And I was like, all right, yeah, can you do this? And Ivan had, it was a summertime. He took his shirt off and it said, he had his tattoo on his back. It says Perez. And I got the motor sequence. He skates up and he does a board slide, I think, or a lip slide down this little kink thing and skates away. And when he landed it, I got Ivan Perez clapping with his hands over his head like, yeah. And then I came back and I was like, I got a sequence of, you know, Robbie Gann Jimmy doing a rail and was very excited. And I kind of started to lay it out. And then uh, Adam Arati was just like, yeah, we don't have money. We don't have money for a full page ad. Mm. Again, we got to do the column ad. And I was like, God damn it. And I was like, by this time, I was so sick of making ads that I had to alter at the last minute. Because there's like a lack of communication. People are like, yeah, you got it. If you don't send it, but you don't get on FedEx by today, you're not going to get it Mm. into the thing. Sure, sure. So it was a whole, it's a nightmare. Nowadays... You you know take a picture put it on Instagram you can make an ad it yeah, ends yeah. up yeah. this was like a week long ordeal right two, and you got to fed you got to send the ad in besides you know? that you got to make films like right. you have to take it to a service bureau and they have to like print you out CMYK Jeez. films and put them in envelopes Whole and thing. mail them yeah, yeah it's yeah. a disaster and I was so mad and I remember like sitting down losing my shit like god damn it like this is never gonna work we don't have any money and then I was like looking at the frame and I was like how can I put these pictures in there they're going to be too small and i just remember like kind of like going through the you know because it was early photoshop so you'd Mm. have to open a pick one picture at a time okay and i was going through seeing like where i could crop and then like opened up the last shot and i think i went to the bathroom or something i came back and it was the railing gan jimmy skating away and ivan perez clapping so you never see the trick, huh. but clearly something happened on the rail because this guy's applauding it. Wow. And I was like, you know what? That's that's the ad. And I went, and that was the first ad. I was like, I'm going to start changing Ooh. the way that people are looking at things and trying to do things unconventionally. Okay. Wow. And everyone was like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> what did he do? Right. Does it matter? You know? And uh, and then we they, after that, they started like giving us bigger and more ads Ooh. and i was uh, originally going to start doing graffiti tags and running with the tag but i thought for the vast majority of people who are reading thrash or skaters would not understand what it said mm. okay. they wouldn't read that it said I zoo york you. so i committed to uh doing zoo york and various different ideas and then the thing that really held it together was I <laughs> went and got the whole team together in the office and I had a couple of fonts. And I was like, listen, no more willy nilly font that's going to change uh, based on whatever, you know, lunch you had. We are <laughs> going to stick to a font. It's going to be the corporate font. And like asked people what they thought. And ultimately, we ended on Futura Condensed Regular, okay. which is the font in the gutter text. Oh. Um, and then that kind of evolved where uh, we, I did it. We did another ad, and I don't think like I gave photo credit to the photographer. Oh, ouch. Yes. They were very upset, yeah. this particular photographer. So I was like, all right, I'm never going to do that again. And you know, had to go write the photographer's name. Then I was writing it. And I wrote his name out, and I was like, well, if the fucking photographer is getting credit, I want credit. (laughs) So I I didn't want to write my name, so I started writing Ocular. So I was writing Ocular on there. And as I did that, I was like, realized there was like all this other shit I wanted to talk about, (laughs) about like this photo, or it's wintertime in New York, and you don't know how lucky you have it if you're not stuck in the snow. And I started like writing these like messages (laughs) In the gutter text. Okay. And that kind of like became this signature thing with Zoo York. It became like this, like, uh, I I just, it was like my little uh, evolution of a genius thing. As I said, I was like super close with Nottis. I would stay in the back of his house over here in Venice. And we were like really into graphic design. And he and I went to the Third Street Promenade to have, this is actually one of the proudest moments of my life. Um, uh, On my deathbed, I'll think of this moment. (laughs) And he and I are like, 
eating dinner outside on the sidewalk at the Third Street Promenade, which is an accomplishment having dinner with Nottis to begin with. Oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, this crew of little skaters comes by, and they go to the newsstand. We can see it. And they all grab the new Thrasher, and they all sit down on their boards, and they're sitting there. Me and Nottis are talking. And then Nottis is like, Eli. And I'm like, what? And he's like, look, watch this. And I'm like, what? He's like, I've been seeing this, but check this out. And we're looking at the kids, and then the kids are going through it, and then they all stop, and then they all turn the magazine sideways and start reading it. He's like, they're looking at your ad. Wow. And I was like, like, holy fuck, really? Mm. That was like, I got chills just saying that. I was like, that's the best thing ever, you know? And then they would read what I had to say. That's like was, that's like for us with, as skaters, seeing somebody with your with your pro board, oh yeah. mm. like in the wild. And they were wow. doing it down the side? You were still doing the side? Yeah, uh, I'd always do it on the gutter text. No, these were full page spreads. Oh, full page spreads? But oh no, I'm sorry, they were full page spreads. We evolved to full page okay, spreads. Okay, okay, yeah, I know you're all the way over there. Yeah. You, you might not. <laughs> <laughs> and actually it got so, uh, Chris Naratko, when he was writing for Big Brother, mm-hmm. he he went on tour with the zoo guys for something. And then he was like, Oh, I want to do gutter text for the whole article. Oh, so sick. instead of like writing captions, everything was, was on the, te- I did okay. gutter text <laughs> for this big brother thing. So with the zoo York thing now, I mean you, because there was a couple different intera- iterations of zoo York, right? Yeah. It, it yeah. kind of came this and then it changed and then it changed. I'm actually interested in your perception of what the iterations were. Let me know. What do you think the iterations are? Well, I mean, it's the team, right? It was okay. like the team was th- this team, and then Sal Barbier brought in his team. Uh, okay, and then there yeah. was like so there was different like whoa different eras, right? Almost. So it's like it's like the beginning of Zoo to like nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, is essentially is that when is that when Sal brought in? No, no, that was around like the Forrest Kirby and all that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that was like two thousand and one. 2001. 20 years. Ago. Okay. That's yeah. crazy. Bro. Yeah. I was like, uh, I, listen, Quim Cardona. I, there's so many guys who I love, uh, skaters. Zared Bassett, Danny Supa. Oh, my God. Uh, Jeff Man. Pang was our team manager. I mean, That's Jeff crazy. Pang's my best friend and like crazy. my skateboard idol. But uh, this was right around the same time as Echo coming in. Yes. So this is what happened. The uh, and uh, this is good to be talking to skateboarders about this because mm-hmm. I, it, you know, nobody else knows. No one else right. knows. Right. Right. So you get to a certain point, you get to a magnitude where there's only so much zoo stuff you can sell. Mm-hmm. You know, the the but shop this is a worldwide brand now. I mean, no, you got this is a- this is this. I'm getting to how the echo thing okay. happened. Okay, okay. So the so the the we we're. Still in New York City, we're on uh, 425 West 13th Street in the Meatpacking District, mm-hmm. just operating out of this, you know, warehouse with, you know, you see in the documentary, sure. Matthew Barney's doing all his artwork, and it was like really exciting, fun times. And we uh, start Illuminati. Uh, well, basically, here's the idea. Ricky's like, I don't, you guys are in New York, New York's doing good, I'm from Philly, and I want my own shit, and me and Ricky kind of bonded on the 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 conspiracy theory of the Illuminati and secret societies. Okay, which I'd find fascinating, but am not a Bobby Puglio. Oh, yeah. Right, oh <laughs> oh, he's he's deep with it, right? Yeah, a little and, bit, a little bit. Yes, yeah. and and I'm it's a numbers and, game. <laughs> <laughs> for him, it certainly is, and, <laughs> and and I'm also interested in it mostly because of the aesthetics. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. the 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 hand symbols and the clothes they wear, and how the yeah. architecture. Like what could be done with it? A lot. Yeah, right. and it was really just the architecture. Oh. You know, like the the Freemasons are the Freemasons. Be, sorry, no. because they had the secret knowledge of how to build stones and right, make right. Uh, cathedrals and fortresses and yeah. castles. Right. And that basically- They didn't want to teach anybody else how to do right, that. Right, that that kept them from being peasants and serfs, mm-hmm. you know, and ultimately coming to America and maybe helping found this country. Mm. So I was really into that stuff. And I uh, and this is before the internet, so I had like books and shit. Mm-hmm. And, and there's also like all these weird conspiracy theories about- uh, you know, the pyramids mm-hmm. and, and that's how come it's on our dollar bill yeah, and yeah. the idea of the, the you know, the elitists are at the top and then as it goes wider, the, mm-hmm. the masses kind of support the societal structure and Ricky Oyla was really into this. Gotcha. So Ricky was like, I want to start my own skateboard company and I was like, 
Illuminati. Let's do that. And okay. he loved it. It was going to be Matt Reasons and Serge Tranowski. And I was like, got to like finally do something different than Zoo. It wasn't like people like, yo, you know, we were the yo company. It was like, <laughs> I'm sick of doing fucking cityscapes with a tag, you know, or whatever, you know. Challenge yourself a little bit. Always right? challenge yourself. Always want to go do. And, and on top of that, I had a whole stockpile of like fucking awesome shit that was just inappropriate for Zoo. Gotcha. Right. You know? And I would show it to Oeola and he was like, yeah, this is it. Then also Rodney and Adam and I met. One of the, th if you're going to start a company, this was like the smartest thing that we did. We were having trouble, especially with our success. You get amped and then you basically f shoot yourself in the foot. Would you shit the bed? You act like an asshole. Okay. And we started to do dumb stuff. We basic, there was like a, luckily for us, there was like a miscommunication. I don't want to bore you with all of the details. But we were trying to make a, our own concave. Mm. And there was a miscommunication with people who had 3D printing technology to make the concave that I was like, oh yeah, this looks good. And then inadvertently agreed for them to manufacture this thing that would cost so much money that it was going to put us out. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And like, and we didn't discuss price. Okay. These guys were just like, we're delivering this thing. Where's our $50,000 or whatever just, it was. Just went. Wow. And we were like, you're not getting a dime. We never signed anything. And they're like, but you guys were so cool. You know? And we're like, yeah, I know we're cool, but cool people would have people sign contracts and let them know that they're going to be paying. You know, yeah, it was like crazy. this type of thing. And we, and Adam and me and Rodney were like, like, this is going to, we couldn't pay our pros. Like it was like, became like an issue. And, um, my father, my mom, is also owned a successful business at the time. Mm. She was uh, doing computer graphic headhunting and was super famous. All of my friends who did computer graphics got their jobs through my mom. Oh, and my that? mom had a success. It was making dough. Like she was caking out. Okay. And we told her, she actually ended up because the meat market was being renovated. Mm. She wanted to get a loft. So she moved literally across, like I could open up the Zurich window and be like, ma, and she could come to the window. Okay. <laughs> we fucked up. And we told her a problem. And she was like, you need, uh, you need a, like a business manager. And we're like, well, that's what Adam does. He goes, no, he's a business enabler. You need a guy who you voluntarily yeah. give yes or no, uh, you know, power to. Gotcha. And and we're like, well, you got to sign contracts. No, you don't have to do that. Turns out that my dad, who died when I was ten, his old business partner does this professionally now. Wow. Huh. I can't remember his name now. Oh God! The, nope. uh, this I, I, it'll come to me. But yeah, this, yeah. My mom was hooked, uh, hooked, hooked him up, hooked us up with him. Okay. He came over and was like, hadn't seen me since I was like seven, and he was like, "You made all this?" And he was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "All right, tell me what you do. I don't care what you're doing skateboards. What do you want to do? How much money are you making?" And we're like, "Yeah, we want to go and make this. <laughs> we want to go and do this." And he's like, "That's not happening." And he was like, "You can't afford to do that." If this is something you want to make skateboard trucks, hypothetically, you need to go and allocate money to that. And when you can get to this much money, then you can go into making right. skate. It was the only thing that saved Zoo York. Crazy. We were uh, we were going to be like a flash in the pan. Mm. Harvey, that was his name. Harvey. Yeah. Little Harv. God Harv. bless Harvey. Harv. Harvey Harv. was like, he'd come in. Every two weeks, he, he was like a retired, wealthy businessman. Mm. He would come in every two weeks, and we'd have our meeting of ideas. Oh, we want to do this. We want to. We're going to get a bigger trade show booth. Uh, no, you're not. I, <laughs> he brought you I, back, back down to reality. Yeah, he's sober. He's our sober master. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sober. And I don't mean sober like we were high or drunk, yeah, no, no, but yeah. 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 so yeah, yeah. sobering. Right. You know. So Harvey was really the guy who was like, "Yeah, you've got to like you know figure out what you want to do." Uh, it looks like, you know, we all realize there's only so many Zoo York hoodies people are going to buy. There's only so many boards that Chappie could make. There's a whole thing we talk about Chappie and the woodmill and how mm. that happened. But um, we decided that we were going to go and make a distribution company, mm -hmm. become a deluxe or a dwindle. In New York. In New York. East Coast. And our first company... Other skateboard company is going to be Illuminati, and we're going to start a wheel company that we called Empire State Urethane. Hmm. And we took out ads. We hired Peter BC as our pro. Uh, he didn't skate for Zoo yet at the time. Okay. He skated for Empire, 
And we, you know, Harvey was managing this, and that was the direction we were going to go into, which was going to be like start just making more and more skateboard companies. Um, and then a few things happened in secession. Uh, I'm doing this for this is historically a little bit inaccurate. This takes a couple of years. Sure. But what happens is uh, the first thing that happens is um, a guy whose name I'm not going to say, uh, he was our t shirt. He's a friend of mine to this day. Okay. He uh, he is so key and intrinsic to street culture, but I, is very private gentleman. He when we started making T-shirts at Fat Farm, he was the guy who we went to in the city who was like making T-shirts. He made T-shirts for Calvin Klein, but saw all right, graphic T-shirts are the future. And I had to connect with him, and mm. we got along really well. Um, he, uh, we'll talk about this mysterious man very briefly. Okay. We went to him to go make shirts because how are you going to make t-shirts? Right. We don't know screen printers. I went to him, love the idea. I love what you're doing, Eli. Like, I'm going to go do this. There were some mistakes made, but like he was super committed. Hmm. He was like, all right, well, I, I can hook you up with these shirts. I have overruns of shirts from Calvin Klein. You can have these. Hmm. So like we had like, everyone had like Hanes beefy tees and we had these like shirts that you couldn't get anywhere else. Gotcha. Differentiation strategies. Yeah. Every time this happened, we were like trying to do that. Then I came in and we were like, oh, you know, complaining about money problems. And he was like, oh, listen, the Japanese are actively looking for partners to license your brand in japan and he was like look at this brand i made i just came up with it it was a silly idea but he licensed it to japan and i saw that and i was like say no more fam and i literally was like i got our money problems i went back to fat farm <laughs> locked myself in there and i made a whole this is zoo york this is the t-shirts you can make there's such a great opportunity for brand expansion especially in japan honorable japanese businessman and i made this like super slick color printed out at fat farm book i walked back to this guy's office and i was like flip hap check this out and he was like holy fuck he was like this just shit on anything he ever did <laughs> and he was like I showed it to him, he's like, Eli, he's like, you, this is just amazing. He was like, fucking amazing. In fact, guess who's coming here? I have a meeting with right now. I was like, what? He was like, some Japanese business investors. I was like, well, go get him, cat. You know, like, that's great. I'm going to go back down to, to Zoo. <laughs> got on a subway, took the subway ride back, got back to Zoo. Oh, how was the meeting with this guy? And I was like, oh, it's great. Um, we'll call him KM. I was like, how was it? Great. Ring. Done. Wow. I was like, what? He was like, those Japanese company came in. They're one of the biggest corporations in Japan, and they want to license you exclusively in Japan and for this much money. And we were like, what? Wow. wow. We so stoked. This guy like totally hooked it up. Later on, he went and secured the, before Echo, he now was like, oh, I'm right here in the thick of it. So he licensed the American clothing brand, for zoo and woo wear mm. so for a couple of years in this gentleman's business in an office was woo wear and zoo york okay. and we were like always hanging out and like you know i was like you know i filmed you and made this video yeah right <laughs> they didn't know what we were talking okay. about <laughs> you know so um uh it, this you know this gentleman uh just is just where he is today, just he's highly involved and key in Supreme now. That's where uh, he's ended okay. up. So he, uh, KM is super important to all this. Sure. But this this is kind of like before Echo. So while the Zoo York and Woo Wear thing is kind of going on, we're trying to do uh, Illuminati. Illuminati and this, the uh, what do you call it? The wheel brand. Yeah. We make all these wheels. We try to sell them to all of our shops. And they're like, mm, okay, what about Zoo Wheels? Can we get Zoo York Wheels? Yeah, but what about uh, Empire? You're that. that's, that's cool. But kids want the Zoo York. Mm -hmm. So we were like, fuck. Like now, we, uh, now we're like, Peter BC, you want to skate for Zoo York Wheels because we're not doing this. I'll just skate for Zoo York. So that's how oh, we got yeah. Peter BC. And then... Illuminati's doing good. People are like, yo, that's bugged. We're taking out full page ads. I'm doing crazy shit like putting out, asking kids in like, I'm doing whole ads of just dense text, like reading. <laughs> and I'm like, I want, I want you 
the skateboarder to learn about the importance of copper to the uh, to to Freemasonry and also to the development of the United States. Anybody who writes me a book report, I'll send them a fucking sticker or something and I would get book reports. Kids would go and, and turn them in in schools. I had school teachers writing me with the book report. Like one of my students who's like a terrible student came in and like did this whole thing about, you know, um, uh, the, uh, Paul Revere and how Paul Revere was a silversmith and then how it went into copper and how copper's used in all of the rooftops and, wow. and all of uh, Washington DC when, the, and you know, and I was like, wow, this is great. Like you could interact with all these kids and like uh, freshen minds. Huh. Boom. Cease and desist. Yeah. Uh, mm. From the Illuminati. From the Illuminati. <laughs> they must have been they're trading they, cards. They, they, okay. yeah, the trading cards. I was going to go into a uh, Assassin's Creed thing, but like, no, <laughs> the, the, the Illuminati card company sent us a cease and desist oh, because wow. games and sporting goods are under the same auspices category. category. Interesting. They were like, Insane. I'm like, you guys make, we even called them up to plead with them. Like, this is skateboards. And they were like, nope, no. Wow. They were like, what if we want to make skateboards one day? You know? So Illuminati was done. Done. And we were like, thought, wow, it's crazy. We're like, like Ricky. Yeah. And they were like, what? And we're like, we can't use the name. And they were like, are you fucking kidding me? So I, so they went and made Silver Star. Yeah. Oh. We let them free to go gotcha. and follow the Freemasonry path. <laughs> <laughs> to uh you know late nights with i'm surprised you didn't keep them under your umbrella uh there's nothing to keep it's ricky oyola he can yeah. do what he wants yeah, yeah. true yeah. but like he's he sold a lot of boards for you guys you, you figured you want to keep them in the, the same building Sometimes i mean ricky ricky had a free yeah he, well, he he's a philly guy and at the time it was more so like we were the abandoned stepchildren in the northeast so if you were from Boston, if you were from Philly, we could all come together because that's all we had. Right. There was no one else around. But now we were like getting more and more skaters. You know, they were people were trying to start competing New York City brands. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't want anything to do with New York. Right. So wow. he went off to go do his own thing, as he should. He's sure. a, you know. You know, he, uh, Ricky Oyola and I were Z boys together. We were teammates. He was. We were, it was, it was, we were Amazing. teammates. Amazing. <laughs> I love, I love that. How I crazy is that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Like he was skating for me and was like, remember we did, we're in the Z video together. I was like, no. Wow. He was like, I was the guy ripping. You were the guy with the lackluster oh <laughs> skateboard bar. Yeah. So people are starting to request Zoo York product now. I mean, Zoo wheels and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, so this is the thing is like we went this. So the, everything falls apart. No one wants our uh, um, Empire Wheel Company. Oh, yeah, all that. And, right, right, right. and now there's no Illuminati. Right. Only people want zoo stuff. And also, we go and in comes Harvey. And he's like, you're not doing this distribution deal. Right. He was like, you you completely fucked up this whole thing. You spent money on trying to market. You're taking away your focus from what you, what's yeah. your yeah. bread and butter. And then he's like, also, you're selling skateboard products, but you're selling like, 25% uh, of your income is skateboard hard goods. Mm. The rest of it are people who just love the name Zoo York. They're buying the clothes. Yeah. So at this point, uh, our good friend, um, uh, who uh, will remain nameless, had some situation. So we got the marks back. And we were like, all right, we can go into the clothing line. Well, we're gonna, we decided we need to go into clothes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Clothing, if we do it right, we can facilitate and pay everybody who skates for us. Harold Hunter can get his check. Jeff Payne could get his check. Sure. And we can, you know, get the clothing going on. And we had everybody throwing offers at us. We had people who were like, you know, we'll give you X millions of dollars. You know, we're like, oh, we want to go into clothes. You know, um, where are we going to make the clothes? Because who we're making them with now domestically is not good. Hmm. Everybody who's in Australia and Japan, you know, it's like, they want clothes, but like you have to kind of either allow them to go make their own clothes in their own country because it costs too much money to ship everything. Even if, even with my my history of Fat Farm, I've gone into suddenly I'm in some other giant world of clothing manufacturing that I've never had any interest in, and I don't you know uh, I don't have any skill set. Isn't in. it all different sizing as well too? So you're oh, sending yeah. different sizing. You'd be you'd you'd be sending different sizing over there. You'd be making two separate things. See how your bewilderment at this? That's how we were. Right. <laughs> Because before this, we're like sort of making clothes and it's all being made in sweatshops in the garment district in, um, in America. Mm -hmm. 
And we're, we went to Japan and we met with some influential people over there who you, you would know who asked us, you know, please come and be part of what I'm doing, mm. which, and, and so just to be 110% clear where we are, this is the late 90s. Mm-hmm. Nobody has boutiques where they're making billions of dollars. Right. The only person who ever has had their own sort of clothing shop that sort of works is Stussy. Gotcha. Fat Farm tried to do their own shop. It didn't work. Mm. At this point, if you want to make money in a serious fashion, you need to get into Bloomingdale's. You need to get into... Uh, Macy's. Big box. Mm-hmm. Well, department stores. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So um, that was, and that's how you're a success. Stussy had a, Stussy had their own boutique and I'm sure it did some business, but their, and they did sell to skate and surf shops and mm-hmm. that did some business, but their money was in, you know, you'd go into Bloomingdale's and there would be the Stussy section right, right. and you you start having to go in a mass more real estate. The more real estate you can get in these department stores, then you can start making more money. And that is the business model since the 1920s. Gotcha. Everybody who ever made any Halston or, you know, uh, Polo or whatever, they all, at some point, you have to be in these sure. things. They do business at a different capacity, though, with like all those chargebacks and just things that you might not be prepared for. Right? I don't even know what you're talking about, chargebacks. I'm a skateboarder. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. I don't know anything about this. I, and so, on the one hand, you have investors who are like, "Here, we're, we'll give you guys sixty million dollars or whatever," you know. Sure. And we're like, then what do we do? And then who do we hire? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Jesus. In comes Mark Echo. Right. And they have a, a gentleman working with them, this Italian guy who used to run some other huge clothing company. And they're basically like, check it out. Like, we have infrastructure. We have an uh, office building in Hong Kong. We have 400 employees. We have relationships with 60 factories in China. We have shipping companies. We have lawyers who know about international tariffs. What the fuck is a tariff? Let me tell you what a tariff is. If you make a jacket and you want to sell it, the tariff is 30%. But if you sell rainwear, because rainwear is a necessity, then it's only 15%. So if you have a jacket you like and you spray it with a waterproof coating, suddenly you've made an extra $7 million by, you know, and you're like, (laughs) you're like, what? 15% goes a long way. 50% goes a long way. (laughs) Yeah. And and that was basically it. They're already killing it. They're, Echo, Echo's already killed. They, they've gone to another yeah. level of clothing. They were like, the, I mean, it's like basically like we like had like the we had the the uh, the <laughs> what's his fucking name? We had like the hot mixtape on the streets. Sure, you sure. know, and these this is like Puffy coming to you, right. like you know, like listen, this is how it's done, fam. And you're we like, got a catalog of <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, right, <laughs> yeah. And um, and they wanted to get into business with us and. We had our, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the business details, but we had a really good deal with them. Like whatever you could possibly want. And it ended up being that there was even no companies involved because we still personally, Rodney, Adam and myself owned the company and and Mark Echo, his sister and their business partner owned that side. That's amazing. So we basically just grouped together as six individuals. It was no business. No outside noise. Interesting. Yes. And this was all like we talked to Harvey and he was like, listen, these guys are unbeatable. You could get the X millions of dollars and just fuck up and not deliver and make mistakes. And then if you, because at this point, we're starting to get into Bloomingdale's. Mm. And Bloomingdale's is like, listen, I don't care the design of clothes you're making. The kids are going back to school September 10th. That means that August 20th, that shit has to be because that's when their moms are buying them back to school clothes. So we need guarantees that you'll deliver. Mm. So if we buy 50,000 of this cargo short, you better be fucking delivering it on this date. Right. Every date that you miss, you owe, you're owe you getting less money. Wow. It's fucking savage. Yeah. Wow. And just like that, it was, and I was like up for the, the task. 
Like I was just like, fuck yeah. I was like, bring it on. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I like made Jeff Pang my like design assistant. And like, we were like fucking flying to Hong Kong like all night long and like staying up. And we had like one Chinese girl, uh, Suku, shout out to Suku, who was like our assistant. We're talking to all these Chinese, like, oh, and in our, uh, a whole office space, an entire two floors, you know, of like people where I'm designing all night and like leaving stuff and they send it to factories and samples are coming back. And like, it was like real wow. intense. Wow. <laughs> But but guess what? I'm not skating anymore. Your business took over. And then there's like other factors that come in, which is like, have I have I have I done the Zoo York crew a disservice? Mm. Have I it disgraced their honor? Like you're moving too fast. You're getting all this stuff. Our thinking of it, you know, and you have mixed reactions because some of the older guys would be like, you know, everyone fucking knows about this now. And then it's like, well, you guys were writing graffiti tags that said Zoo York. What was the point of that? The point is to get people to recognize the name. Right. So whatever we did, whenever we like, you know, anytime we went to any country, anytime we made a new website, even in the tags and the flyers, it was always like Zoo York is from a small group of skaters and graffiti writers mm -hmm. in New York City. You know, Mark Edmonds, Andy Kessler honoring their roots, you know, right. that was and we wanted to get that message out there. And I think we did. You yeah. know, I think that the the if we did not approach it that way, the whole world knows about mm. Zoo York and this small group of kids better oh, yeah. than any graffiti tag ever could be. For sure. But, you know, at a certain point, you know, it's like my grandfather... <laughs> <laughs> he used to say he used to have this thing because you know he's very proud of me that I went and did all this stuff because uh -huh. I was a fuck up you know yeah and he was like uh, and he was he's a huge success in the auto industry mm. Chrysler Dodge mm -hmm. and he was like he was like how does the because I would talk about you know oh I love skateboarding and this and that and then I would just be like I'm this is killing me how did the fat girl who ate too much cake get skinny I don't know. She got herself a job at the cake factory because she loved cake so much she got fat. The only way you are going to ruin that is to make it your job. Then you will stop eating the cake because you, you hate disgust. You hate you hate it. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm in the cake factory now. Right. You know? <laughs> right. And you know, that was part of it. And you know, Echo came and there was politics and money, and they had uh ulterior motives and wanted stuff and they're you know, and there was also great shit that it, it enabled. We did skate maps. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we got to. I got yeah, to pay my friends great money and right. send them on trips. You know, buy them iPods and get RB. Allow him to go do whatever the fuck Amazing. he wants. And yeah. you know, it was awesome. You know. So uh, real quick though, I just want to clarify. So <laughs> they came in as a separate entity and just dumped money into it and used to make all a their... really complicated thing. Please, uh, simple. Yeah. They did not uh, initially, I'm not sure where the deal ultimately went. Okay. But um, when, when we did, we did Zoo York for so many years, right. we had, uh, you know, when I went to Adam and I was like, yo, you got $20,000? Yeah, me and my guys from, from uh, college. Yeah. So it's like right there, besides Rodney, me and Adam, we have these other six gentlemen that we uh, that are part owners of Zoo York splitting x amount of percentage shares. right okay yeah. shares and yeah. this this has continued throughout the years mm. so the way that we honored our investors was to have the owners of Echo buy them out oh, for a very, gotcha. very tidy sum, thereby doing right okay. by all the people who invested in us. Gotcha. Oh. So and now now Echo owns a, 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 a shares of what you guys are doing. So they have a vested interest. So it went from like, you know, it's like obviously friends, also yeah, family yeah, yeah, members yeah. invest to keep you going. Sure, sure, sure. You know, however is Gramps. You know, we yeah. need to get ten thousand dollars for something. Can you lend this? You know, yeah, no, nope. yeah, of course. So all those friends and family, these people who did mm -hmm. right by us, they all got Amazing. their just desserts, Amazing. and that was one of the best feelings of my yeah, life. Bet. Yeah, bet. and they were like, "What?" <laughs> and you're like, "Pow, take this check." And they're like, "Oh my god," you know. Yeah. And you're wow. like, "Yeah." And then uh, Echo had nothing to do with Zoo, but the owners of Echo. We're now financially invested in Zoo, right. and we're so co-owners with they us. They got your, they got their eyes on you. You're under a microscope, right? Yeah, and besides, whatever the shares and whatever the dictate of, of however, however a, a company is divided up and organized sure. and run, 
um, when the person is like, you know, it's like, I, I imagine if you have a movie and mm. you've written a script and you've done all the work and you want to go have a studio make it and they're like, yeah, come to Paramount. You, we've got a soundstage right here. There's a whole thing. Now you are every day in yes. Paramount and every day the guys who work at Paramount are there and they're coming on to yeah, your yeah, set yeah. and they're checking everything out. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing. As soon as there were like, you know, the reason why we wanted to do them, which was that they have a mastery of global manufacturing, infrastructure, and trade. If once you've gone in, it's like you're at their mercy. Well, on paper, yeah. it's like the perfect business partner. Right? Yeah. It's like they have everything. Yeah. So we could do anything. Yeah. And there's a, and there's a, there's a, even, even beyond whatever Echo did. Sure. There is, once you, once the monster gets to a certain size, you know, once you, once you, oh, we've got, uh, pick a fucking big animal. Oh, we've yeah. got a little baby grizzly bear. We're going to feed the grizzly yeah. bear. And now the fucking grizzly bear is 10 feet tall. You're like, I can't get enough food to feed this sure. fucking grizzly bear, you know? Right. So, you know, at, at a certain point, you know, we're selling, let's just pick any of the, of the department stores. Let's say it's Bloomingdale's. Okay. And you're doing X millions of dollars with Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's has given you... Um, in in their sixty stores, they've given you twenty feet of real estate, and through the sixty stores, do the math. I'm not going to do the math, sure, but now you are responsible for two hundred and fifty square feet of Bloomingdale's Corporation, right. and a lot of those are in places you'll never go to: Spokane, Cincinnati. You know, nothing against those places, but like you're in New York, and who's buying this stuff? Are like people you you know got in Georgia and then they come back with the sales reports and they're like here's all the stuff we designed and they're like that's great you guys are killing it also we're gonna need uh, six different pairs of jorts jean oh, shorts <laughs> yeah and you're like zoo york jorts first of all no one wears jorts oh you're you're sadly mistaken young yeah, 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 yeah. you must have seen the yeah right video we wear yeah. those <laughs> you know they're like just they would be like so now they're they're coming in ask telling you what to make a hundred percent for certain regions right or for well yeah but you know it's because that shop, that store would have a buyer. Yeah. Right. And uh, trust me, there. Uh, this is all a, a, an accounting issue. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, and this is gone as you can see. The 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 upside to all of this is that at our new deluxe Zoo York offices with a full digital video editing system and anything I ever want, it's there. We had like a uh, one little like a uh, tara. It was a bank. We renovated an abandoned bank oh. and made it to Zoo York offices. And we had like a runway, like the entrance way. And, you know, everyone would be skating there, like how you'd have like a skate session everywhere else. Amazing. And it was just like, you know, all my friends, all these people who I've known my whole life, they're all here and they're all getting fat paychecks. And like, you know, Red is in a fucking Cadillac Escalade and Zared's in a Cadillac Escalade, sure, sure. you know, and it's like. Fuck, fuck, let's make some jorts. Yeah. You're never going to do that, you know? I'm never going to wear them, but I'll make the jorts. I'm never going to see anybody wearing the jorts, you know? That was the thing. And I know you're laughing, but, I love it. but it, they, <laughs> we would have meetings, you know, whatever, and it would be like, oh, we got to do that. And everyone would be like, jorts. Yeah. You know, it became like, a, we knew what it meant, jorts. But um, you look at the PO order and you're like, oh, wow, well, maybe we should make some jorts. Yes. Right. But and numbers it, don't lie. Yeah. Uh, and, and so. That's how that all happened, and it facilitated a lot of great stuff, and I was doing a lot of great stuff, but then for me personally, mm -hmm. I also started seeing the, the a couple of things. There's only so many times you could write Zoo York, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. No one's written, nobody in the entire planet has written Zoo York more than me. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I hope no one ever beats that record. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I got interviewed by somebody and I remember I was at the offices and the guy was like, you know, you know, you've been doing this for like 15 years or whatever, but like you're constantly making it fresh. And like, how do you re, you know, readdress the same thing over and over again? And I think I said, like, nobody's written the words Zoo York more than me, but I take it as like a Zen lesson. You need to re, you know, re-examine all the stuff in a new fresh light. But I was just like... 
I'm going to be 50 years old. I'm going to own a skateboard company and there's all this other shit I want. I never wanted to own a skateboard company. I never wanted to make clothes. And like, I can't, I can't do this. Right. So I, I got out. You, you got know? out. Yeah, just like yeah. that. Yeah. I was like, guys, I'm going to get out. And the guys at Echo freaked out. Everyone freaked out. Like, what the fuck? Like, you can't, you can't leave us. And I was like, I have a team of all these people. They all know, you how know, to write New York. Mm -hmm. They all know how to write New York super well. Yeah. Just adhere to the, the mission statement and the game plan. And it should evolve. It should just do it. And like, you know, um, uh, the Christian Jaquette, that's another great story. Like one of the other moments in my life where I was like, oh my God, I'll, rem I'll remember this on my deathbed. Deathbed moments. <laughs> Here we go. I'm at Zoo. This is a little f rewind. Sure. I'm at Zoo way in like uh, 97 and uh, eh, people buzz our door. We'll let this guy in and this like blonde German guy comes in. I'm here to see Eli. I'm from Germany. And I was like, what's up, dude? And he was like, I'm a graphic designer. And I was like, cool. I'm writing my master's degree on all of your Zoo York work. Here, check out my design book. And it was like, he went off on his own. Right. But it was like everything I ever designed. Wow. And he was like, I've come for your accurate graphics. I will need the Zoo York tag and I need the font <laughs> so I can make it realistic. And I was like, wow, you can have fucking anything you want, brother. Crazy. And gave it to him. He went back to Germany. His, his teacher called me up and was like, oh, do you want, uh, we do in Germany, we have like honorary people to grade you know, people's final oh. paper. You want to be a, a, an honorary professor. And I was like, of course I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, A plus plus. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, oh my God, I graduated. I was like, would you like a job? You want a visa? You want to move to New York? Oh, wow. And he was like, yes, I do. And I was like, you have yourself a job. We'll get you an apartment. Wow. And like, wow. and, yeah. And that's like still to this day, one of my best buddies, you know, Amazing. I love that guy. And he was... One of the victims of this, where he's like, mm. "You're leaving," and oh, I'm like, shit. "Yeah, but I got you." You yes, know, I feel good. Yeah, wow. I was like, "You, you got this." So, what do you do when you leave? Do you, do they do they buy your shares, or how does how does something yeah. like that work? Didn't Echo just acquire the whole company after yeah, a while? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were definitely like the 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 thing that they wanted to do was they wanted to like how we wanted to go make a distribution company. Mm -hmm. They wanted to acquire a bunch of various brands. Yep. So they wanted to do the same. And that's why they did it to zoo. And the, the, their argument was like, look, we're going to try and do this with like, with like famous rappers okay. and famous stars and other brands. They had a business plan. Yeah. Going, right. And they were like, if we screw you over, then no one's going to want to work with us. Right. So that we're like, that sounds cool. And then as the time went on, they tried to go make other clothing brands. Mm. I can't remember which ones they did, but they tried to do other clothing brands and never had any success okay. with them. Right. So they would try to make a clothing brand, dump money into making product and dump money into advertising and I just gotcha. airball it. Right. So um, once that happened, it was like, all right, we got Echo and Echo was kind of fizzling mm. also. And then Zoo. And so it was like, there was like, uh, it just it turned to like a toxic work environment. I feel really bad for my business partners who really, uh, Rodney and, and Adam, really just got dragged through the ringer oh, by man. like them just once, you know, trying to make it as bad as possible. Wow. And some good things happened. Uh, Nardelli, he came on, you know, to do the graphics and like completely mm -hmm. got Zoo York and how it was supposed to be designed. There was some like weird year or two where they were like making weird stuff, but then like they got back on the program gotcha. and they had Zared and they got the yeah, team yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Chaz Ortiz era happened. Yeah, I am yeah, not, yeah. I have nothing to, I don't, I've met Chaz Ortiz once. I right. don't know, I don't associate. So him. you pretty much got out when Sal came in with his kind of, when with his crew, yes, right? Yes, that, 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 that was sort of the transition, yeah. Gotcha. Mm. They brought Sal in, he brought his team. I was, Expedition, I mean, not a, um, um, no, aesthetics. Aesthetics. Uh, aesthetics, yeah. Yeah. aesthetics. Yeah, aesthetics, yeah, yeah. Which right. I liked, I really liked what they were doing. Man, they had a yeah. great team and everything, but we, yeah. I, you know, in skating you hear that like, you know, oh, all these guys are coming in. The other writers maybe didn't like that. You know, I, I don't know. I just yeah. I mean, there's always wacky politics, sure. and and I mean, and it's it's never, uh, despite what 
you might concoct in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's always a dysfunctional family. Right. The, 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 to the Ricky Oyola's, the Robbie Ganjimmy's, yeah. the Ryan Hickey's, all the way to whoever was mad about whatever, you know. Right. Um, as long as you have Harold Hunter in the van, everything will be okay everything. most of the time. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because sure. he's going to make you laugh. And Jeff Pang was a tactician, you know. Yeah. He was like, you know, uh, someone wrote once in like some tour article they were like, when your tour manager can skate better than you, exactly. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's happened to every one of us, you know. Yeah. So, well, not me, but. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing like New York when it happened, when they did the switch from aesthetics to New York. Mm -hmm. And then hearing about all the Echo stuff, being on the West Coast, it'd yeah. be like, what's going on over there? Like, there's a lot it's of stuff. Of blurry. It was yeah. kind of blurry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just being over here, like, just not. I mean, I, I don't really know because I was out. You were out. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like, and they were like, here's Sal. And I, I liked aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of aesthetics, I was like, you know, we have meetings and I was like, I love aesthetics. The aesthetics aesthetic is not the New York aesthetic. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like you guys are doing like fucking Euro style you know, super slick stuff and it looks awesome. But like, this is like Different. grime time, right. piece of rat, you right, know, right, right, right. Um, you know, you got, we have to figure it out. And I think there was a growing, growing pains sure, in there, sure. but I had my eye on, I, I wanted to, I, I, and also just to be clear, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I just worked. Right. You were, so, you were just doing your, you were focused on what you were doing. In a very real way. Yeah. When I took the job at trip, mm. Until I was like, I'm uh, in 2003, where I was like, I'm going to cash out and mm, like be okay. a consultant. Right. I was a workaholic and I was doing, in, before I started having assistance, I did all the skateboard graphics, yeah. all the ads, all the t-shirt graphics, all the wheel graphics, all, you know, the skateboard videos, you know, the, all the music for the skateboard videos, all the... You Are know. you editing those too? Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's definitely a co a collaboration with RB. Yeah. RB's so crazy talented mm -hmm. yeah. that, you know, we got him his own gear eventually. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the mixtape thing, there's a whole, uh, you know, uh, story behind this. Oh, the mixtape thing is amazing. Oh, I yeah. love it's that amazing. video. Yeah. The, it, because we never got any of the, the reason the rights, why there's yeah. no DVD. Right. There's only the VHS is because... Music rights. Because of the music rights. Right. Yeah. Right. We were about to go make the DVD and Harvey was like, he, he was like, who has the rights to this? And we were like, uh, we talked to Stretch Armstrong and Bobito and they <laughs> talked to the rappers and the rappers are cool with it. Right. He, they talked to, you know, Method and all, everybody and they all said, fine. They gave us the blessing. He was like, that's cool. What are they rapping over? What, who made the song, the beat they're rapping over on top of that? What's the song they sampled? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were like, are you fucking kidding me, man. Hey, and that Harf was, is looking out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harf is, you know, <laughs> he's doing his thing. He is. He's doing his thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, then after that, I went and uh, we opened up a music studio and oh, had right. other friends and we started all making all the weird right. Zoo York music that you would know from EST and Peep yeah. This yeah. and all. Oh, yes. Looking back, I was going to ask you because you said you were doing everything. Right? Yes. But it sounded like you already, you had a crew that was behind you, maybe more graphic designers and this and that. Were you <clears throat> two more? Were you controlling in that? Oh, for sure. I was a tyrant. Looking back at it now, would you have, would you change? <laughs> Looking back, would you change yeah. the way that your tyrant ways? You know what? It sounds it's, like it burned you out. It did. It burned me out for sure. Right. Um, you know, like might, it might have burned other people out too. Right? I mean, oh, for true. sure. Because yeah, I, true. I, I was not, I'm not, I'm not an easy person to get along because with sometimes it. letting go is the best thing. I, I'm that guy now. Now, right. yeah, right. I have more. You know what it is? Is it, God, now that I'm here talking, it's like therapy. Yeah. This is therapy. Uh, we've heard that before. Uh, Where is that like button right? Is it right here or right here? Just a little scroll um, coming down the bottom. It's it's Subscribe. over to yeah, it's on your it's on my left. right. It's no, on, my left. on your left. Hey, yeah. Hit right that there. button right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, please. The, the like button's kind of like in the in the right middle there. there. It's like we're kind of like Oh, it's there. like right here. Kind of. Like yeah, right there. The subscribes like over to the left. <laughs> it's like right over there. <laughs> All right.